Hey everybody, Mr. Judson here. Welcome back. Uh, Happy New Year to all of you. Uh, hope, hope you enjoyed your break and, and got some good rest in. So we are now starting chapter three. Um, I know I talked to you guys about this in, in class prior to watching the video, but uh, there will not be a test on chapter three. We just have our uh, Central Washington final left to prepare for. So um, in chapter three, we talk about exponential functions. What that means is that our, our variable x is, is in the exponent, and, and this, is, this is kind of the general form of, of an exponential function. So, you know, kind of thinking back to chapter one, we would have a, b, c, and d in, in the equation. Um, this n is just some number, and um, depending on what that number is, we could have it, an exponential function that shows exponential growth or exponential decay. Decay is when something decreases in value, like an automobile. You know, you go buy a brand new car, everybody knows the moment you drive it off the lot, it decreases in value, and it continues to decrease um, as long as you own it. And uh, that way when you sell it someday, you know, you just know you're selling your car for a lot less um, than what you bought it for. You know, for that reason alone, I, I will never buy a new car, a brand new car. You know, if I'm going to buy a vehicle, I want it to be four or five years old because I want to let somebody else take the depreciation, you know, that decrease in value. Um, I'm still going to lose value, but not as much. And, and so uh, that's, I just choose to buy used cars as, as opposed to brand new cars. Um, you know, growth is like if, if you invest money or if you buy a house, what you hope is that it grows in value over time. You know, for a lot of people, their, their home is almost like a retirement account. You buy your home, you pay it off, and then at some point you sell your home and there's a, a good chunk of money there that you can use to you know, survive on in your, in your retirement years. Um, electronics, all decrease in value. Computers, you know, tel uh, your phones. Um, I don't think people even talk about MP3 players anymore or, or iPods because everybody keeps their music on their phone. Um, but, you know, any kind of electronic stuff is going to decrease in value. Um, you know, artwork, especially famous artwork, you know, will increase in, in value. That would be a, a good investment. Stocks and bonds will increase in, in value, okay? So what we want to do for today is we just kind of want to introduce the idea of an exponential function. Um, anytime the n value is greater than 1, and a lot of times you'll see things like 1.5, 1.2. As long as it's larger than 1, it means that it's increasing in value. Okay? Um, and as long as the B value here is positive. Okay? N is greater than 1, B is positive, then we've got exponential growth. If, if N is between 0 and 1, you know, think about like if this is 0.5, and you start raising it to an exponent, what's 0.5 times 0.5? It's 0 0.25. It just got smaller. And if you multiply it by 0.5 again, it's going to get even smaller. So in any time that n value is less than 1, I, we won't see a negative number here. Okay, it'll always be positive, but if it's between 0 and 1, that means you're, you're taking part of a part. Right? 80% of 80% is a smaller value. It's 64 percent. So, so anytime this number is less than one but greater than zero, as you keep on multiplying times itself, it just gets smaller and smaller. Remember, when we talk about exponents, it means you're multiplying something times itself a certain number of times. Okay, that's why I say if you take a, a some decimal number but less than one and you multiply it times itself over and over again, it just keeps on getting smaller. That's when we get exponential decay. Or if b is negative, you know, if you think back to chapter one, you know, we said what happens when b is negative, it flips this graph across the y-axis, and then it looks like this. So we get exponential decay if one or the other happens. Okay, if both of these happen, this number's between zero and one, and we got a negative number here for b, well, then it just flips it again. You know, we have decay and the B value is negative, so it flips the graph, it goes back to exponential growth. So if both of these were true, 
then we would have growth again. All right? So we'll do some practice with this. One of our, our goals is to be able to graph exponential functions, but probably more importantly is just to understand them and, and how they work. So let's, let's start with uh, something simple. Let's say I've got g of x equals 3 times 0 0.95 raised to the 2x power. And I want for you guys to find g of negative 3. So that's just a calculator problem. You know, plug it in, see what you get. You guys go ahead and try it. All right, so first of all, I'm going to have 3 times 0 0.95. If I plug a negative 3 into here, I'm going to get negative 6. Remember, you got to do exponents first before multiplication. Our, our calculator will handle that. Um, it shouldn't be a problem. If I do 3 and then in parentheses, 0 0.95 raised to the negative 6th power, there's what I get. And our calculator knows you do the exponent first, then multiply by 3. See, if I would have done this, 0 0.95 raised to the negative 6 power, I'll get this answer first, then multiply it times 3. See, now I got that same answer that I got before. So this equals 4.081. There's my answer. Here's another one to try. This time I have f of x equals 4e raised to the 3x. And we want to find f of 2.3. So let's, let's talk about this thing right here for a second. E is a, a number that's kind of like pi. You know, pi is 3.14159 something, I don't know. Um, e is also a number, it's 2.718. And, and just like pi goes on forever, so does um, the number E. If, if we look at our calculator, all right, so here's another problem that's similar to that first one, um, except this time we've got four times E raised to the 3x, and they want us to find f of 4.1. Well, what, is, what does that mean, e? Um, e is, is a number that is sort of like pi. It's a, a decimal number that goes on forever, um, 2.718. Okay, that's, that's a, a rounded value. Um, if, we, if we took our, our calculator, and, and right where the division sign is, the second function, there's a little tiny e there. So if I go second e and hit enter, you know, there you can see that number, 2.718281828. It, it kind of looks like it's going to repeat that, that pattern forever, um, but it doesn't. Shortly after, you know, a couple 1828 um, sequences, all of a sudden it just turns random again, okay? But this, this is a number that is used for anything that changes continuously. Okay, that word continuous is going to be really important to us. If, if you think about like a car, we, we've already said that that's something that depreciates. It depreciates continuously. Okay, it doesn't just decrease in value at the end of each week or each month, it's every single day, every single minute, your car is decreasing in value when you buy one. Or if you invest money, your money grows continuously because the stock market's always changing. It doesn't just change at the end of the week. All right? um, so this is going to be a very important number to us, one that we want to make sure we understand and, and we're comfortable using. All right? All right, so let's see. That means I've got 4 times e raised to the, let's see, if I multiply 4.1 times 3, that's 12.3. And so again, I can, I can put that into my calculator exactly the way you see it there. 4 times e. 
there, there's actually a button over here that says E to the X. Um, what it does is when, when you hit that, it automatically, automatically bumps you up into the exponent, so now you just have to type that in, 12.3. Um, if I don't hit that button, if I use this E, well then I just have to hit the exponent button right afterwards, and then I can put in 12.3. So it's kind of like a, right here, it's a two for one button, I guess. That's what you say. All right, so arrow out of that and hit enter. And wow, that's a pretty big, big number. So what I got was um, 8787838778783.955. There's my answer. Remember, when we round, always round to three digits. Um, a lot of people saw this on the, on the test. Uh, 3D means we're just rounding to three decimal places. Okay? Always, always, always. That, that rule's not going to change for us. All right, so that's one thing our, uh, we're going to get asked to do today is, is to just plug some numbers into an exponential function. Use your calculator to figure this out. Um, I would encourage you to do it with a, uh, a graphing calculator and a scientific calculator. It's always good to know how to, how to work both of them. So when, when we graph an, an exponential function, we're either going to see exponential growth, or we'll see decay. Um, but the first thing we want to understand is that there's an asymptote here that this function gets really close to but never quite touches. You know, if you think about a car, a car always has some value to it, right? Even to the junkyard, it's got some scrap metal value. It's, it's never worth a negative amount. Now, I, I suppose if you had an old junky car sitting around and it wouldn't start and you didn't have any way to get rid of it and you had to pay somebody to come and take it away, well, then it has negative value because you're paying to get rid of it. Um, the idea is really to get rid of it before that happens, right? Okay, so, so this is exponential growth. There's an asymptote here that the graph gets close to but doesn't touch. Now, from the work that we did in chapter one, we know that by just adding or subtracting to this, what it does is it takes this graph and moves it up or down. And that doesn't change, okay? The D value just shifts the graph up or down. When we do negative C over B, that's gonna shift the graph left or right. Okay, that's so what we did all through chapter one. We took opposite of this divided by B. Just like when you're factoring, we take the opposite of this divided by what's in front of X. And that's gonna shift the graph left or right. The, the question is what's, what's getting shifted? Well, when you go up or down, the asymptote definitely goes up and down with it. When you shift left and right, if, if this asymptote goes on forever, it really doesn't shift anywhere, right? It just stays where it's at. But there's, there's always a key point, and it's, it's this point right here. And, and that point is not our normal uh, negative C over B comma D. It's not that point this time, all right? The, the reason it's a key point is if I plug in a zero to an exponential function, um, you know, let's just go back to something like this, four raised to the X power. If I plug in a zero, Anything to the zero power equals one. So what I get is the point zero comma one right here. But then if there's a number out in front, I'm gonna multiply four times whatever that is. So if I did four to the zero and got one, one times a is just a, that means this value right here is zero comma a. That's our key point. Okay, now once you add in C values and D values, it's going to move that point. You know, negative C over B, it's going to take this point and shift it over a little bit. Your D value is going to shift it up, or maybe it'll shift it down. Um, but that's, that's what we're looking at, is, is just taking this key point. I, I first of all, I want to decide, do I have growth or decay? That's going to tell me whether my graph goes up as I go left to right, or does it go down as I go left to right. And then once I know where this key point is, then I'm going to look to see what negative C over B equals and also what D equals. That's going to tell me how far I shift it left or right or up or down. 
And really, that's it. That's, that, that's our rules for graphing an exponential function. So let's, let's try one. We'll do one together here. Call this problem number three. Let's say I've got y equals 2 times 1.34 raised to the x minus 1 plus 2. Now, when I first look at this, you know, you think, oh, 1.34, can't we just go with easy numbers, Judson? Well, I think that is an easy number. All we care about is, is that number greater than 1 or less than 1? It's always going to be positive, okay, this number right here. Since it's larger than 1, that means that right now I'm thinking I'm drawing a picture that looks like this. Exponential growth. All right, let me get a few tick marks in here. All right, so <clears throat> 0 comma a, that's, here's my a value, that's my key point to start with. I'm going to put a dot here, but that's not where it's going to stay because it has to move somewhere, right? When I do opposite of c over b, that's positive 1 over 1, so I'm going to go one unit in the positive direction. That's positive, so I'm going to go two units up from that point right there. Now, Remember, when you go up two units, the asymptote has to go up two units as well. So that's usually the first thing that I do, is I draw in the asymptote. Okay, my key point was right here. I've got to go over one, and I've got to go up two. That key point is now right there. And in order for me to draw a graph that has exponential growth, because of this right here, that number is larger than one. My B value is positive, so I'm just going to draw... A curve like that that shows exponential growth. That's it. I've graphed it. I'm not worried about are these points in the right spot? Are these points in the right spot? I'm worried about that one point right there only. And then all I care about is do we have growth or decay? And we've got growth right here. All right, let me get you guys one to try. All right, you guys go ahead and try this one. Uh, we want to graph f of x equals 2.5 times 0 0.813 raised to the 2x plus 4 minus 1. All right, so I'm looking at this, and what I see is a number that is between 0 and 1. That means I've got exponential decay. Uh, my b value is not negative, so it's not going to flip it over or anything. So I'm, I'm looking for a graph that looks like this. All right. My, my uh, point where I at least begin my work is at 2.5, which is right there. But from there, I'm going to have to shift. Let's see if I do negative C over B. Negative 4 over 2, that equals a negative 2. So I'm going to shift to the left two units. My D value is 1, or negative 1. So we're going to shift down one unit. Okay, so that point right there gets shifted down one unit and then two units to the left. So down one, then go over one, two, to right about there. Now when I shift everything down one unit, I have to also shift the asymptote down. Since that's less than one, I've got exponential decay. And so here's what my graph looks like. Don't, you know, most of you guys did a really good job on the test um, with arrows, but there were a few people that weren't putting the arrows on the graph. That's something we've talked about a few times. Um, Got to include those arrows. We're, we're acknowledging that this graph doesn't just stop there. It goes on forever in that direction. Same thing here. So it's going to go on forever, get closer and closer to that asymptote without touching. Also, um, I think, you know, again, most of us did a pretty good job here, but we have to draw asymptotes, okay? You, you can't leave that off the graph. That's a guideline that, you know, we're communicating that the graph gets close to this line without touching. So, so it needs to be there. All right, there it is. That's, that's what that graph looks like. Let's try one more. I'm going to go ahead and erase our, our notes here. All right, so this time let's graph uh, this function. I've got y equals a negative 2 times 
7, 8 raised to the negative x minus 4 plus 2. We want to draw a sketch of what we think that graph looks like. <clears throat> All right, so the first thing that I want to think of is I've got a, a number larger than 1, so to me that means exponential growth. But then my b value is negative. That flips the graph across the y-axis. So what I have now is exponential decay, like that. But then this negative sign here, we know that that flips a graph over the x-axis. So what I'm going to end up with is a graph that looks like this dotted graph right here. Okay, we started with growth. And then it got flipped across the y-axis, so it made my graph look this way. Instead of growth, I've got decay. But then that negative sign is going to flip it across the x-axis. And, and normally, that point right there would have been at 2 comma 0. It would have been right here, but we flipped it over down to here. But it still has to move either left, right, or up, or down from there. So negative c over b, that's going to equal positive 4 divided by a negative 1. So that's a negative 4, which means we've got to go to the left 4 units. My d value equals 2, so that means we're going to shift everything up 2 units. So my asymptote was right here on the x-axis. It's going to go up 2 units, and it'll be right here. This point right here got shifted four units to the left, so one, two, three, four, and then up two, so that puts our key point right there. And what we want to do is we want to draw a graph that looks like this dotted black graph. So there's what it looks like. And, and like always, you know, once we graph this, we should really check this on our graphing calculator to see if we did everything right. Go back to the original equation, plug it in exactly the way it looks. So here's my y equals, we'll clear that off. I've got a negative 2 times, in parentheses, 1.78, close parentheses, and then raise that to a negative x minus 4. I'll arrow out of the exponent, and then I've got plus 2. I want everything in the calculator to look exactly the way this is written. Okay? And then I'll just go zoom option 4, and I should be able to see a, a pretty decent graph. So we thought we were going through this point right here, which is at negative 4, comma 0. That's that point right there, so that looks good. Um, looks like this graph is going up and getting closer and closer to where y equals 2, but never quite getting there. That's because of that asymptote. So I think my graph matches what I see there. All right, that's it, you guys. That's what we have for today is, is drawing a few graphs, punching some numbers in with the, with the calculator, getting used to you know, using that ex exponent function. Um, and then come Wednesday, we'll start talking about you know, how do we use this stuff. All right, let me get you guys a homework assignment. All right, so this is assignment number 15. This is our Monday portion. Um, we're on page 226. We're going to do every third problem. So 3, 6, 9, dot, 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 all the way up to 42. Um, if 3 divides into it evenly, do it. If 3 does not divide into that number, don't. Okay, that's a good way to check and make sure you don't get off with your counting. All right, that's it. You guys have a good day. Take care, stay safe. I will see you later. Bye.